You're Muslim. What, what, yeah. What's your um, category? The Sunni, Shia. What's your? We are, we are Sunni. You're, so you're, you're, you're 85 percent of Muslims are. 90 percent. 90 percent of Muslims yeah. are Sunni. Maybe Muslims. more, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So, so 90 percent are Muslim. Uh, there so are other sects. So for sorry, you, Sunni, Muslim, Sunni, yeah. Sunni Muslims. You obviously believe that the God of Abraham, Moses, is the one true God that created the universe. Absolutely, yes. Okay. So, what is it? Why is it that you believe? And yeah, just, just kind of give me a, a basic. Yeah, sure. Um, so, so the for us the central doctrine is the Tawheed. You heard of the Tawheed? The oneness of, the oneness yeah, the oneness of God. So we do not uh, divide God. We do not uh, believe that He is uh, someone who is like a creation in any shape or way or form. Yeah. And we believe God Almighty is the one who created everything. He's the creator, obviously. He's immutable, he's immortal, he's omniscient. So all these attributes of his are something eternally existing with him. So he's always had these attributes. Now, we don't believe God changes. So this is one of the key objectives we have between Islam and Christianity. Because in Christianity, you believe God incarnated as a man. You see what I mean? Now, this... What, yeah, I mean, so uh, this... Is what I uh, would like to discuss. If you're okay with that, the reason the reason for that is because if if your central doctrine is revol it, it kind of revolves around uh, God coming down as a man to take your sins away from uh, uh, away. Yes, so kind of redeem your sin by dying on the cross for you. Would uh, would it be right to say this is your central doctrine, in addition to the Trinity yeah, yeah, and so on? Yeah, I think the central doctrine of Christianity is. Because obviously Christianity is born from the Old Testament, it's born from Judaism primarily. Yeah. And kind of the atonement is the number one, the atonement of the sins of the world and the opening up of the faith to the Gentiles yeah. are two very important components of that. So we don't just believe that Jesus died for the sins of the um, Jewish nation or the, Israel, or the Israelites. Yeah. Well, they reject him anyway. Yeah, they did reject him anyway. Yeah. We believe that he died for the sins of the entire world. Right. And so those are very two important. Yeah, so the, the atonement, the crucifixion, the death of Jesus Christ is very right. important. And, and also God becoming a human being as well. Right. As important. That is the key point I would like to address. Yeah. I mean, do you believe God who is uh, divine can can change his nature from divine to divine plus human? So, before we dive into that, yeah, I want to say, what is your perception of the, of the Torah? The Torah and the... Because this is an important thing. Yeah, yeah, of course. So the Torah which was given to Mu Musa alayhi salam, or as uh, Moses, as you say, peace be upon him, uh, has been changed over time. That's what we believe. Okay, so that's what we believe. That's yeah. fine. That's fine. I, I there is still truth in it. It doesn't mean I, I disregard the Torah completely. There's a lot of truth in it. For example, Deuteronomy 6 4 says, Hear Israel, your Lord, the God, your Lord is one. Yes? Shema Israelu Adonai Elahinu Adonai Ahad. So you see, this is the core uh, passage. Like when Jesus was asked, What is the most important commandment? He said, He repeated the Shema in Mark 12 29. Yes? So. That is the reason I'm saying if all the prophets and if all the messengers who came before, including Jesus Christ, if they all um, explicitly stated that God Almighty is one, yeah, yeah. yes, and they never said that God is three in one, yeah, yeah, yeah. yes, why do we see that the Christians who came after Jesus, yeah. the reason I specify after Jesus is because in the Bible, no one ever claimed that God is a triune God or that God manifested as three persons. So, unless you can show me some evidence, of course. Again, again so, so that's, it's not an issue, it's funny, you just presented that. So, the reason I asked you about the Torah is because yeah. you asked the question Can God change? Ma can God mm -hmm. manifest in human form? Yeah, can God change? Whether human form, because some religions they believe they came in animal forms as well. That's what I'm saying. Can God change from being divine to something other than divine? First, I want to focus initially on yeah. can God actually manifest in human form? Is that possible? Is okay. that a logical possibility for God to if, appear? It, we're, not, we're, not, we're not even saying born. We're not yeah. even saying born yet or any of that. Okay. We're just saying, is it possible? Is there any evidence from the scriptures that God ever became came down in human form? I would say yes. Really? Where? In Genesis 18. What does it say? 
pull out my phone. <laughs> you have to bring it up unless you memorized yeah, so, it. <laughs> Genesis 18. And this is the reason I asked you what do you, what do you, what do you think yeah. about the Torah? Because I do not accept your statement that the Torah is corrupt. But I, but I don't want to dive into textual criticism. So I think it's, yeah, it's, yeah, just, sure. it's, it's way too hard up. But it, when I read the Torah, which is the first five books of Moses, the first book it says, Genesis, 8, Genesis 18 says, then the Lord appeared to Moses by the trees of Memra as he was sitting in the tent door in the heat of the day. So Moses, sorry, sorry, so Abraham lifted his eyes and looked, and behold, there were three men standing by him. And when he saw them, he ran to the tent door and bowed himself to the ground and said, My Lord, if I have now found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. But please let a little water be brought, wash your feet, rest yourself under the tree, and I'll bring you some food. So what? Right. So what Why does it say there was God in there? Is it the term Lord? I'm just trying to understand. That's fine. I, I, I want to. This is a very long verse. So I, yeah. I don't. I don't. I don't. If you can give us some sort of a, what do you say, the context, yeah. so we understand because. I want to know if you are assuming all those three were gods. No, 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 no. No, they I, were not. I'm not saying that. Okay. Because. So what from, is the, from the context? Yeah. From the context of this verse, three people appear. Yeah. Two are angels. One is designated as the God of Israel, who appeared in human form. Yeah. Who appeared in human form. You mean God? You mean God Almighty? So, hold on, hold on. I'm saying God appeared in human form. And, and Moses, oh sorry, sorry, and Abraham realized it was the Lord. However, what we're not going to say is that the inconceivable God in all of his majesty appeared to Abraham. No, he, he took on a form that Abraham could receive him in. And he also ate food. <laughs> okay. So you're telling me it wasn't God Almighty, it was an, some sort of a form of God. Is that what you're telling me? Listen, listen to what you're saying. Because the same Torah says you cannot see God and live. Am I right? So you need to reconcile the two. You cannot exactly. see God in the flesh and live. You can see God in the spirit and live. Of the spirit is pure. Hold on. We're, we're, we're trying to... Don't have sin in we're in the middle of a discussion, if you don't mind. We're just trying yeah, to have a chat. No, man. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I think, it's, I, I think okay. I should respect your uncle. That when oh, we are sorry, 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 when we are talking, yeah, yeah, you're right, you're right, you're right. right. How you doing? How you doing? Thanks, bro. So, so what I'm saying is, yes, the Bible <laughs> says that you can't see God and live. Absolutely, Moses asked to see the glory of God in uh, Exodus 33, and yeah. God said that you can see my back parts. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> you don't know? Okay. No, no. I'm just I'm quoting. I'm quoting. But you need to know what you're quoting, bro. You can't just say I don't know. No, no. If I'm... you're quoting to defend your argument, then you need to know what it means. No, you just said. You, you asked me a question, and I'm saying, do I know what God meant when He said, "You cannot see my face, but you can see my back"? Yeah. You quoted that. Does, do you know what it means yeah. now? So we, we can dive into that. But yeah. what, what, what I was trying to. I think my initial question was, does God change His nature? If you can answer God that, to, God doesn't have to change His nature to appear. But you just said He had to become a man. That's a change in nature. From God to man, I see a clear change in nature. What I'm trying to do yeah. is build a very straight. Sorry, bro. Oh, sorry. I'm trying to build a foundation. Okay. Yeah. The first question I ask is: Can God, the inconceivable God, appear in human form? Is that even possible? And I've shown from Genesis 18. No, I'm not saying I proved it. No, but you you never showed us if that is the Almighty God, because the term Lord is used for David. The term Lord is used for many humans. The term Elohim used for Moses. So just because you have the term Lord there, is that the reason you're interpreting that particular person who appeared with two angels is Lord Almighty, God Almighty? No. I just want to know, why would you conclude that is God Almighty who appeared to you in the form of a man? Okay, it could be an angel, it could be a third angel. Because when you read the rest of the verse, yeah. it talks about the Lord, Specifically. So there you go again, the term Lord. Is that the key? No, no, I'm not saying it's not there. The term Lord is there. <laughs> but I'm asking you, is that the term you're using to conclude that is God Almighty? Yes, because this is the Yehovah or Yehovah Elohim capitalization. Oh, so wait, wait, wait. It actually no, no. says Yahweh in there? Yeah, as, as, as we go further. This is, this is the reason why it's like, uh, this is a very long verse. Yeah. And it would be great if you could just read it or, or we could read the whole thing. You can, you can read the whole thing, my friend. All I'm saying is, if you're going to say that is God, then you need to reconcile 
the other passages, for example, Malachi 3.6, where it says God doesn't change his nature. Do you think, wait, wait, do you think God Almighty is human? What do you mean by human? Well, you know what human means? No. Like you and me. So, so I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, what, what, what I mean by... No, no, you can't just say, I don't know. No, no, if no. you're making the... Look, you're making the argument, is there any evidence in the Bible that God came as a man? And then you presented Deuteronomy 18. God is it 18? God appeared, manifested. It was a manifestation. He just came down. He appeared to Abraham in a form that he could receive him. But that's why I'm telling you. That is a change in nature, my friend. So, so you're saying that God, who has... The ability to do all things cannot just appear to a man. God doesn't go against his nature, does he? Does God go against his nature? For example, if God told you something, like God says, I cannot die. Yes? Yeah, yeah. Do you think he can die? You see what I mean? You'll have a contradiction hold on, then. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, because what we're speaking about now is logical possibilities for a being who has no limits. No, 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 wait, wait, wait. When you say a being who has no limits, you need to qualify that. Limited by his nature. Exactly, okay, so exactly. Yeah, so that's, that's very important. He cannot go against his nature. So for example, if God says that he is all-knowing, he cannot become ignorant. You see what I mean? If God says that he is uh, almighty, he cannot become weak. Hold on, hold on. If God says that he is immortal, he cannot become mortal. Here's the thing. Others you'll have logical no, and no, no, no. textual contradictions. No, no, no because, and, and this is what I'm trying to say, because what you're saying is this. There is a passage in Genesis 18. Okay, so let me just say that. Genesis 18. If you have an opportunity, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just read that and ask yourself what has happened. Genesis 18 is a story of Sodom and Gomorrah. So Abraham is sitting in his tent. Three men appear to him. He recognizes, the, the men aren't described in detail, but he acknowledges, he understands that one of those individuals is the God that he worships. However... Wait, wait, wait. Wait a minute, wait a minute. I think you added a bit in there. Hold on, hold on. Let me, let me, let me see, let me see. No, but you, you, you cannot just say he recognizes him as God he worships. Did it say that in the Bible? No, it didn't. It does, it does. Show me why he said that. The problem is, if I had the, if I had the verse, I would actually just show it to you. Like, oh, you don't have the verse? Did no, you not just read it? Okay. So you do have the verse. Let me, let me just kind of say my thought, and then you can respond. No problem. Fair enough. You, you, you can, Let's not twist the scripture, that's all I ask. Genesis 18, yeah. it's a story about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. Three men appear, one stays with Abraham after they eat, two leave and go to Sodom and Gomorrah. Okay? In Genesis 18, Abraham is having a conversation with the God of Israel, the person who is still with him, and they're speaking about how Abraham is going to be blessed with a son because his wife is barren. Okay? So Sarah, who wants to have a child, is blessed by God. God tells her that um, she will have a child a year from now. Yeah. And then Sarah laughs. And then the Lord, and then God says to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh? Hmm. And Sarah denies that she laughed and there's this kind of exchange. What I'm trying to illustrate is the Bible, the Torah specifically showcases that God can come to earth if he wants to in a human-like form, if he wants to. No, but that's your interpretation. It's, I want to know it's from the, the scripture. It's, wait, it's in the passage. Yeah, no, no, you use the term Lord. The term Lord is used for many other people. Yeah, but you, you, you have to gain... In fact, Moses is called Elohim. If you look at Hebrews uh, 7, 1, yes, no, no, wait, wait, I'll let you speak. I think it's only fair you, yes. So when you use, when you're using the term Lord to somehow understand God became a man from almighty God, do you know any, any Jewish person who actually takes the Torah as the holy book, interprets it like the way you do, where they interpret this terminology Lord in there as God almighty. Do you know any rabbi, any credible scholar of the Torah who actually interprets it like this because I think the it's only fair we use we use the Torah and understand it at least from the people to whom it came to yes Moses brought the Torah for the for, for the Bani Israel for the children of Israel and these are the Jewish people so how do they interpret it because you're if you're telling me until Jesus came these people were all completely ignorant of who these three men were then you are somehow saying that 
all the Jewish people, including Moses, did not understand it because obviously Moses taught the people who the Torah, and he would have interpreted this for them. So I want to know if you know of any credible rabbi, so, Jewish rabbi, so, who would have interpreted it like the way you did. So if we just take a step back again. Yeah. So the very first um, verse of Genesis 18 says, the Lord, which means the actual divine name of God, yeah. appeared to Abraham. Okay? Okay, carry on. I'm listening. As he was sitting in the tent door. Right. So, so Abraham was sitting in his tent. Right. And it says the God of Israel okay. appeared to him. Right. And appeared to him in a human form. Hold on one second. Is that, is that what it's so, saying? Abraham lifted his eyes and looked and he saw three men standing by him. Okay? This is chapter 2. And when he saw them, he ran from the tent door and bowed himself to the ground. It doesn't mean he was worshipping them. No problem. I'm not, I'm not going to dive into that. And he said, my Lord, we don't... See, this is, see, this is Adonai now. The first Lord was Yehovah, God of Israel, or whatever. Blessed be the name of the Lord. And the second, the second um, name was, um, so the second word was Adonai. Okay, the second okay. name was Adonai. As a reference to God, it's like saying yeah. God As in, in Hebrew. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, and now we say, if I have found favor in your sight, do not pass on by your servant. So he's talking to his Lord. Okay. He's talking to his God. And then when, when we go down to verse um, ten. It says, he says, I will, I, will, I will certainly return to you according to the time of life. And behold, Sarah, your wife, shall have a son. Okay. This is verse 10. Yeah. And Sarah was listening in the tent. Now Abraham and Sarah were old and well advanced in age. And Sarah had already passed the age of childbearing. Okay. Then Sarah laughed to herself, saying... I'm old. How am I going to have a child? And then the God of Israel, who caps, Jehovah God of Israel, said to Abraham, Why did Sarah laugh? Saying, Surely shall I bear a child since I'm old. He says, Is anything too hard for the God of Israel? At the appointed time, I will return to you according to the time of life. So we know from verse um, 10 to 13 that the, the Abraham is standing in front of a manifestation of the God of Israel in a form that he can receive. It, do, it, it doesn't mean that Abraham beheld the, the infinite glory of God. It means that God came down in a form that um, Abraham could receive him and, and commune with him. And they, and they told. So you still are saying that this is the actual God Almighty yes, who came true. in the form of a man? He says it in the verse. Okay, so how do you reconcile John 1.18 where he says no one has seen God? That's the infinite, that's, that's the divine. How many gods are there? There's one God. So which God you cannot see? That one God, right? No, no, no. That one God you cannot see. So what Abraham saw cannot be that one God. Hold on, hold on, hold on one second. You really have to make up your mind. <laughs> Hold on, I've been holding on so long. Yeah, you kept repeating your stuff, you kept repeating yeah, your narrative. I'm, I'm to but I'm no no, I know you've already built up, but if you if you keep repeating it, it's not really building up, it's just repeating it. Okay. What I want you what I want you to do now is reconcile the two. Can you see God or can you not see God? You cannot see the infinite glory of God in a form that is not veiled. Okay, so can God leave his glory? God can he be without his glory at any time? <laughs> I, I like your questions. I hope I have a so good answer too. I'm trying to take it one one step at a time. Yeah. God is not limited. Sorry, God is not? Limited. Right. So God, the infinite God, if he wants to, can appear in a form which limited. enables finite beings to see him. So God, he said God is not limited, but he appears in a form that is limited. No, he can. That's what you're saying. You're, you're contradicting yourself. Do you not realize that? Because if God cannot appear in a form that human beings can receive him, which is called condescension in many respects, then we cannot comprehend him in any way, shape or form. We cannot comprehend God. Can you comprehend God? You cannot. But you're saying that God cannot appear in human form. Actually, God himself says that you cannot see me and live. You cannot see him in his full unveiled glory. That's what I'm saying. Now, I'm saying. now my second, no, no, my second question following that is that God's full glory, yeah. yes? Yeah. Can it become, can God become 
less than his full glory. If he wants to, no. Then he's not fully God. <laughs> Either way, you're stuck in a, between a rock and a hard place. You are, my friend. You don't realize that. the way you're constructing your question. Okay. You're I'm saying God himself says you cannot see me and live. Listen very carefully. Because you're taking that out of context. And here's the reason why. Okay, okay which part have I taken out of context? Go on. Tell me. The exact verse where Moses, God says to Moses, you cannot see my face. I'm using the New Testament, John 1.18. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes? And, he, and he's reaffirmed. No one has seen God. That's what right. does he say? No one has and seen God. Right, yeah. Which God did no one see? The God of Israel. Good. Yeah. Is that the only God? So one true God of Israel. Good. Yeah. So if no no one has seen that one true God, Except how did, Jesus Christ. <laughs> what about Abraham? You just so you were just saying all along. No, no, no. I'm, Abraham I'm, saw I'm, God. I'm, I'm saying in, in 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 that exact verse it says no one has seen the Father except the Son who's in the bosom of the Father. Yeah. Go go continue. No, but I'm saying if no one has seen God, yes. It's called a it's called a theophany. So well, what's a theophany? Oh, I see. So now you're you you're you're going to say that's a theophany what Abraham saw. It what? may. <laughs> you want to explain for the audience what the theophany is? So we can understand it so better? What I'm, it's like, I'm, I'm Yeah, what's, what's the theophany? Let's start with that. I'm talking to you. I'm talking to you and I'm trying to... Um, build an I'm argument. trying to build a foundation. Yeah. Because your central point is this. That the God who created the universe cannot manifest in a form to enable finite creatures to, to relate to him. I'm not saying it. God himself says it in the Torah. If you believe in the Torah and also in the New Testament in John 1.18, in both, I quoted both the verses for you, yes? In fact, you quoted the first one. So in both it says you cannot, in, in the Old Testament it says you cannot see God and live. And then you, you use the argument in his full glory. And then I asked you, so you're telling me what Abraham saw was a God who is less than his full glory. That means he changed his nature. Full glory, less than full glory. Two different natures. You really see, see, you when, see when you say nature, like we, we need to define this word what you mean, but because what, what what you seem to be presenting is that the God of Islam specifically cannot it, just for, for the sake of appearing, he cannot appear in a human form if he wants. Do you think the Jews believe this? Forget about the Lord of uh, the God of Islam. Do you think the Jews, uh, the Ju uh, Judaism, holds a view like you? reading from the Torah that they actually believe that he came in the form of a man. No, they don't. So, my friend, you guys are the odd ones out. The Christians are the only ones who say God manifests as man. Hold on, hold on. No, no, no. This is a fact, my friend. You go home, watch this video, research and ask any Jewish rabbi, ask anyone, any credible rabbi. Yes, trust me, they will never ever say God manifests as a man. In fact, they will quote to you, you know which passage? From Hosea chapter... 9 sorry for, uh, chapter 11 verse number 9 you know what it says read it read hosea 11 9 hosea. it's very clear they are the odd ones out not the muslims so if you are this the christians always say oh you guys think god can never come as man so he's weak actually becoming a man is his weakness it's the other way around but they don't realize that what does it say where did you put it in i'm god and i'm not a man I'm God. I'm not a man. I'm not a man. And I'm not now, how are you going to reconcile? I've given you so many passages, you cannot reconcile them. What you're saying, what you're saying isn't, isn't, even, isn't, even, isn't even a thing because what we're really speaking about is a logical possibility. It's, 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 does the Creator have the ability to appear in, in a form that's a human form? If he wants no, no. To. When you say logical possibility, that is using speculation against God Almighty. I do not interpret the scripture like that. The way I interpret the scripture is what God tells us about him because as you and I both know that we cannot fathom God's yeah. mightiness, yes? We don't know everything about God. The only thing we know about God is what he has revealed to us. What has he revealed to us? That we cannot see him. That he is not a man like the passage yeah. just read Hosea 11 9. But, but now why would, wait a minute, why would then you use your own logical understanding? Because you know using logical understanding the Hindus believe in Ganesh, who is an elephant god. And that's not funny, by the way. This is their god. We don't, we don't make fun of the gods. But what I'm saying is that this is using logical understanding. The possibilities are limitless. How many things can you imagine about God? But this imagination doesn't do justice to God Almighty. What I'm saying, Samson, for your good and the good of everyone else, please do not blaspheme God 
by saying or uttering something against him, which he never did. I don't know though, but when you read the passage, it says that three men stood there and one of them was the Lord. Yeah, but did did and even did even Abraham consider him to be Almighty God? No, but here's, here's, what, here's, what, here's, what I, here's what I don't really understand what you're saying. What? Because you're telling me he became limited God. That's why Abraham could see him. Because in his full glory, he couldn't stand him. He couldn't. He, he would have died. So we, and that is the reason I say, does God change his nature? Because look, either way you go, if you're going to read the Bible based on your logical understanding and taking literally what is said in the Bible, then maybe you should go and consult the people to whom the book came. The, the Torah came to the people so if, 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 if who, who, who were the Bani Israel. Let me ask you a question. Yeah, go on. I feel like we're, we're, go, we're going into a lot of, we're going into a lot of, a lot of different areas. Do you believe that the children of Israel and Abraham, yeah. God spoke to them directly? God spoke to them, what, when you say directly, you mean like face to face? No. I mean, they heard his voice. Yeah, they heard his voice according to the Torah. So when we and you know what they said immediately? They don't want to hear his voice again. Yes, but they heard his voice again during baptism. So that means God broke his own promise. There's another tangent I could go if you want. There's more than one way to skin a cat. That's fine. So when we read Exodus 19, yeah. it says that the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai. Okay. Carry on, I'm listening. Fire, thunder, earthquakes. Yeah, those were his signs. Yeah, I, I, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm not saying they, I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that's God. I'm I hope not. <laughs> yes. And it said that the sight of the glory of the God of Israel was like a flaming fire on Mount Sinai. Again, it's sign. It's, yeah, it's, it's a sign. No yeah. And then, and then in chapter 20, he spoke the Ten Commandments. But what I'm saying is, the idea that God can enter His creation, I don't see. Like, you don't see a problem with that. I, not just based on my reason, when I read the scriptures, it, it's, it's evident, there's many occasions What if I show you reason, sorry, scripture which, which says that No, but, but here's the thing, when which we says that we don't just say, okay, God is not a man and No, no, not about the man But I'm, yeah. I'm making a point here, for example, we read Exodus 19, Exodus 18, sorry, sorry, Genesis 18 God appeared as a man, and then it says God is not a man. It, it doesn't mean that that means that that, that being in, in its form that appeared to, to Abraham mm -hmm. was the, the full revelation of God's essence. No, he appeared. In the well, then he changed then. He either changed from his full glory to less than full glory. You you need to acknowledge one of them. You can't have it both ways, my friend. I, I, don't, I, I don't know what you mean by this concept of changing because God doesn't change his nature by manifesting in a form that we can listen to. Yes, manifestation is a change in nature. Manifestation, it's not, it's, okay. manifestation in other than himself is a change in it's nature. A, it's not a permanent change. In nature. Regardless, a, even a temporary change is not something that God does according to um, Malachi three six. So, so Read Malachi three six. Did he appear in his full glory? No, he didn't. That was his sign. You just said it yourself. I'm asking you. I'm telling you that those were his signs. The thunder, the fire, it whatever says, it was, those were his signs. It, 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 it's not God himself. It literally says explicitly that the God of Israel came down upon Mount Sinai. Okay, now you're taking things it literally. Says it literally now, in the text. Okay, now you're taking <laughs> things literally. In Genesis 6, 6, it says that God regretted creating human beings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you take that literally? Well, well, well well, 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 what? Well, I... <laughs> Did he not know his plan? That the human, the human beings were going to re rebel against him? They were going to commit all here's sorts the, of... Uh, here's the question. Injustice does, and disobedience? Does omnipotence... Sorry, omniscience mean that God can still not react to something? No, omniscience just means all-knowing. Yeah, does it, yes? mean, does it mean that God cannot regret something? No, no, if God already knew it, why would he, why would he regret? But does it mean that he can't regret something? I think... Looking upon evil. No, wait a minute, wait a minute. Did God know that man were going to be 100%. evil? Does it mean that he was happy about the fact You know, when, when do you regret something? Yeah. When you don't know about it? Wait, you, you, you can know no, something's going to happen and still regret no, it. No, no, no. When you know something is going to happen... Sorry, repent, repent. repent. No, no, no. Use, are you using regret or repent? Repent. repent. Oh, God also repented. <laughs> <laughs> it gets even worse. <laughs> oh, well, I wonder we're, whom he repented we're, to. We're, we're going you know, we repent to God. Whom did God repent to? Another God? We're going into so many different voices. But you brought it up, not me. You brought up all these impossibilities, or rather, I would say, blasphemies against God. Because to me, understanding of God in Islam is very clear. 
We believe in one God, yeah, unchanging God, immutable God, yeah, yeah. Uh, omniscient God, immortal God. All these characteristics but, but about God Almighty come, come, come to earth. Yeah, but but wait a minute. When you say God can come to earth, become a human being, yeah. do you think that is his strength or his weakness? For me, I, I don't think God loses any. I don't think the Creator of the universe lost anything when He appeared to Abraham. He died. He lost his life I'm, on the cross. We're not, we're not even speaking about Jesus yet. We're just speaking about how many gods are there, my friend? One God. Is Jesus God? <laughs> <laughs> Let's go down that lane. So if, if he is, then you're not talking about one God, my friend. No, honestly, look, you have to keep the entire picture of the scriptures. Exactly. You, you yeah. know what you're, if you're, no, no, if you're going to go only by the Old Testament, yes? Even then it's problematic. I just mentioned Genesis 6, 6, where God regretted. Why would God need to regret? A human being regrets, yes? When you actually do something and you uh, you were not expecting that outcome, yes? Say for example, you build a house and uh, you did not have a good foundation. Oh, not again. All right, let's, let's try to stay away from that. Okay, some people are arguing that. So what I'm saying is that if you did not, you did not build a strong foundation, yes, which you should have done, and later on your house fell down, and it, it crumbled basically, then you would regret because you did not foresee that. No, yes? It, or maybe you, so, you it so, occurred so, to you, but so, you said so, so now, it might not matter. So, so, for me, so I'm, asking, I'm asking you, why would God regret if he knows the future, the present and the past all the time? Because God hates looking upon evil. And so for him to see evil, so for him to see human beings involved in all kinds of wicked practices, it frustrates him and it angers him. Because God get angry about things. According he's to... Got, he's got allowed to get angry. Wait a minute. When you talk about anger, do you think it's anger like ours? No, no exactly. No so way. do not compare us to... And we can't even compare what, what it means for God to regret to us because it's a different... Actually, place. it gives us a reason why he regretted it. For creating human beings. Yeah. No, okay? Saying, Read Genesis 6.6. 6. No, it's no, very no, clear. No, no, the passage there. Is, yeah. And then you know what happens? After he, after he regrets, what happens straight after that? No, no, no. Have you not read Genesis 6? No, no, no. <laughs> the flood of Noah. He wipes out entire uh, humanity. And obviously all the animals and plants and all the other living things. So can you imagine this? If God had already foreseen this, number one, he wouldn't have regretted it. Number two, he would have uh, not wiped out the entire mankind uh, for something that he had already foreseen. Uh, again, uh, sorry, I think... It's, it's like rebooting your, your computer because it's something is broken down. So let's reboot it. Let's start all over again. Forget all the computer files which are not oh, saved yet. It's a judgment. God judged the nation. Right? God judged many nations. He judged Sodom and Gomorrah. Oh yeah, of course he does so that. Like, but I'm and, asking. And he knew that they were going to... God's judgment is something that he he warns them first. He, he doesn't just judge them. So always God warns the people many right. times. He sends his messengers. He sends his prophets. And that is the reason I'm saying, look, the reason as a Muslim, I don't believe God needs to come down as a man is because he always was sending warners and people to give them uh, to give them glad tidings as well about uh, the rewards that they would have if they obey God. So I'm seeing warnings and uh, good tidings of a reward from God Almighty was always in the God need to come down as a man and die for you. Why, why did God need to come upon Mount Sinai and speak to the children of Israel directly? Sorry? Why did God need to speak the commandments? Actually, he didn't speak to them directly because they didn't see him. They would have died if that if it was direct. Uh, uh, what I'm saying is, he's, they heard his voice. They, his, they heard the direct voice of God. But why did God have to speak himself? If why, why couldn't he just send an angel? When you talk about direct voice, yes, that itself shows us that he did not show himself in its full glory. <laughs> you see what I mean? The reason the reason that actually works in a way is because if he's not showing his full glory, yes, which is the condition of if you see God, you'll die. Okay, so obviously he doesn't want to kill them. You see the face of God as well. Yes, but even this voice they didn't want to hear later on. Which only means that the voice itself is something which is part of God according to the Torah. They did not want to hear. And God, God, God so, took that covenant from them. And, that he'll not and this is what I mean. so make them hear when, his voice when, again. When you're, when you're reading these things, you, yeah. you said for example, show me a Jewish... Rabbi. scholar or yeah. rabbi who would interpret Genesis 18 as the fact that the Lord appeared to him. The words are explicit. And this is where, for me... That's why I'm telling you, if you take things literally, then you'll have a lot of problem in the Bible, my friend. A lot of problem. 
what, what, I'm, what I'm saying is I, I appreciate that there are some verses where we, 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 we can read it literally, but when it says the Lord appears to Abraham, when it says that the, the children of Israel, sorry, the, um, uh, Moses, Nadab, and Abihu saw the God of Israel. Say again? In, in Exodus 24, it says that the... Uh, um, Abraham made that in the Bible, he saw the God of Israel on top of Mount Sinai and under his feet was a um, sapphire stone. Yeah. This, yeah, I, I've heard of that, yeah. But how the Jewish rabbis interpret this is, is metaphorical. They don't really, because look. How they interpret if, it. Yes. And that's the point. And how do you interpret you cannot see God and live? How do you interpret you, you still haven't given me an answer. And I've been I, asking and, you this and, and from I, the very and, beginning. And in the same verse it says, but you can see my back. In the same verse. And I asked you what was the back, you didn't know that. <laughs> you see what I mean? So, you, you, if you're going to interpret things yeah. literally, then you need to say back as the back of God. Which part of the back, we don't know. You see what I mean? Oh no. So, so li listen, listen. See, I'm, I'm that's what I'm saying, that. Samson. That's what I'm saying. You need to go back to the scholars of the, of the Torah rather than self-interpreting it. No, but the Literally, the because they might give you some insight which you might not have come across. Different opinions, and I, and I, I, I definitely appreciate the. Um, no, but okay, so the the, the 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 central point of our discussion today was okay. We're going to talk about deity of Christ. But what, what I no, the central point is: Does God change His nature? That was the central point. Not His essential nature, but can God manifest? Yes, He can. You know, but, but that's. Seen, but then, if you okay, if you're talking about manifesting in other than His nature. Then you still have another problem, you're changing his nature. Because to me, God's nature is fully God all the time. Not like he becomes semi-God or maybe just a fraction of God where you can actually see him now. I mean, come on, we have, we have a lot of, you, you will have a lot of issues with that if you're going to keep interpreting uh, or self-interpreting by using just your logic all the time and completely, um, yeah. what do you say, ignoring the context of, and the other passages. Which actually would be contradiction. You know, one of the one of the key um, principles in the Quran is that Allah says that if this book, meaning the Quran, is from anyone other than Allah, surely you'll find a lot of contradictions and discrepancies in it. So Allah is telling you that other than God Almighty, uh, yes, every other book which claims to be from God Almighty, yes, even if they're claiming it, like falsely alleging that it's from God, they will have a lot of contradictions. And that is what I've actually highlighted here. The number of contradictions I could actually bring up for every uh, for every passage that you showed me where he says God became a man. For every one of them, I can show you another passage in the Bible which completely contradicts what he said. Well, in me saying that God appeared to Abraham as a man, as it is explicitly says in the text, then he's not fully God. When you say man, that's a change in nature. That God is a man in his essential essence. No, he became a man. At that manifestation. Yeah, so when he became a man, is he a man or God and man? He's God. He's not man. <laughs> <laughs> so he became a man, but he's not a man. I mean, come on, have you not realized what you're even no, saying, no, no, my no, friend? No, no. It's, the way it's you, full it's, of it's, contradictions. No, it's, not. it's the way you're saying it. Okay, you are the one who said he became man. And then when I asked you, is he a man? You're saying, saying no. <laughs> in the Old Testament, yes. Abraham, the Bible says the Lord appeared to Abraham. Jehovah. I think we have done this to death now. Yeah, we have, okay, so so let's, let's move on. Let me give you another passage. Let's move on, let's Do you know the passage yeah. where uh, Jacob wrestles with God? Yeah, yeah. Is that God or angel? <laughs> <laughs> Many people don't know, you know the term Israel actually means struggle with God. The term Israel means someone who struggles with God, wrestles with God in, in, in some passages. Now wait, 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 can you imagine wrestling with God? I mean, what chances have you got? The very sight, the very sight will kill you, forget about wrestling. So anyway, look. You see, would you would you interpret that literally, or would you actually say this is metaphoric? Because this is where the fun begins now. For you, if you're going to be literal, a literalist, because a literalist will have a lot of issues for every other passage in the Bible. I love the fact you just brought it up. That was like so amazing. Um, well, 
Now let's, shall we move to the New Testament now? If you're done with the Old Testament? I'm going to say, Old Testament is going to not really help you much here. I'm going to say, I don't know, but what I want to say is just quickly before we do that, because I acknowledge that's a difficult passage there. But what I want to say is this, you see here where it says... Is it okay if you stand a bit? Sorry, sorry, sorry. That's fine. Thank you. Here it says, Abraham says to God, show me your glory. Then God says, I will make all my goodness pass before you. And I will proclaim the name of the Lord before you. And, I, and, and but he says, but you shall not see my face, for no man shall see me and live. And the Lord said, and he put me the rock. Yeah, so I just wanted to confirm that. He says, so my glory shall pass in front of you, and I will cover you with my hand while I pass by. Then I will take away my hand, and you shall see my back, but my face shall not be seen. But as far as what the back of God is, no, no idea. No <laughs> yeah, idea. let's let's so, let's leave let's park that if you don't know what it is. That, and that's what I'm saying. If you're going to uh, interpret everything literally, me, you'll have a lot of issues. For me, for me, I, so, I, I know how I would interpret that, but yeah. I know you wouldn't accept. Let, let's let's deal I'll with the. He saw the Son of God there, but no problem. That's fine. You he saw. So why can't people saw the face of the Son of God? <laughs> why can't why can't Abraham see it? Did people not see Jesus? And if that is what your Son of God is interpreting. No, so no, why can't I, I, why can't I mean a pre-existent son? You, have, have you ever read the book of Ezekiel, chapter one, yeah, verse twenty-six? I, I don't remember it. Where Ezekiel sees a vision of vision of. Oh, I see. Yeah. Okay. He sees a vision. Yeah. And he sees one like the son of man seated on a throne. Right. And he describes him as having a, a body full of um, complete covered in fire and stuff like that. Yeah. Have, you ever, have you ever read that before? Yeah. So people had visions of, you know, Isaiah, for example. He had a vision of the Lord as well in heaven. Yeah. John says that was Jesus. Yeah. Daniel as well. Yeah. Yeah. Daniel had a vision. Do you know Daniel is also called the son of man by angel? No, 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 no. Yes. So son of man means what? A that's human fine, being. That's fine. That's fine. Well, what, what I'm saying it means is, a human being. See, this, this is where interpretation becomes difficult. But let's let's move on to the New Testament, right? Yeah. Because I think if, so, I, if I start diving so, into this, so more. New but, Testament. I mean, Old Testament. So we already can God become a man. I'm, we, I'm saying there's, there's evidence in the, in the scriptures. Of God appearing but then that is a man. change in nature you need to reconcile that my no, friend in Hosea 9 11 so 11 9 it says God is not a man God explicitly God is not a man that's fine. what more you want that's fine. That's fine. are you saying God is lying I'm, telling lies I'm, in the Old I'm, Testament I'm, and then he switches uh, in the New Testament I'm saying God is lying, but I'm saying so how do you reconcile it my can friend appear in a form of whatever he wants so when you he say appear, wait, okay it's got a cloud is God a cloud? God, a cloud. God is not a cloud. Is God a pillar of fire? For God me, God, as a Muslim, we say, Laisa kamithli ishayan. That means he's <laughs> unlike anything. That's fine. Anything means That's fine. anything you can even imagine, anything you've seen, anything you can fathom. In the scriptures. Everything in the other Torah. than that. Even, even the pork abstaining, Sabbath keeping Jews yeah. believe that the Lord appeared in a form of some sort. We don't know what exactly what it is. And it, and it had a cloud-like formation. And it, and it's, Again, change in nature. It doesn't mean that God has changed his essence. It means he's manifested in the form that they can receive it. That is called change in nature. You're just using semantics now. Okay? okay, okay. Whether you, look, whether you become, whether you uh, become, it's a manifestation. you become other than a human being, yes? Then you're no longer a human being. You're something else. It's a manifestation of God's glory, essence, But that's, like I said, that's just semantics. When you manifest as something else, for example, you know the um, uh, the Hindus and uh, other religions they believe in reincarnation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So they say you manifest as something else in I'm your in in your in, in your future. What do you yeah, say? I'm, I'm not saying that. I'm saying that when you read the the, the, the the Torah in itself, it says that the pillar of cloud and the pillar of fire. Don't be a literalist. You're shooting yourself in the foot if you keep doing that. So, so, so it's, it's a metaphor. I, 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 that would be better actually. I, I'm that would be you. much I'm better. You. Yeah, yeah. When it says the pillar of, of cloud. It's a metaphor. When you say a metaphor, oh, oh. it means a, a figure of speech. For example, if I say you're making a mountain of, out of a molehill. Yes? When, a figure of speech it, doesn't mean taking it literally, my in, friend. In Leviticus, you interpret it as per in, the context. In, in Leviticus 16, where um, the Lord says to, to Aaron, the high priest, I will meet you in the pillar of cloud in between the mercy seat and the Ark of the Covenant. I will meet you in the pillar of cloud. That's a location. So that's fine. That no, can no, be literal. No, no, no. That can be literal. If yeah. it's a location, it, it can be literal. Location, but he says, I will take on the form of the cloud and I will speak to you. Ah, take the form of a cloud. Why not? Isn't that it's a change a in nature? Change. Unless you're telling me God is now cloud. Come on. Come on. I'm not saying 
curve? Well, you can't have it both ways. Oh, okay, when you say manifest, what, 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 what do you understand by the term manifest? Means you become from, uh, I don't know, you become from okay, yeah, okay. from uh, from A to B, from one nature to another nature, okay. from one form to another form. There is a change. Change of what? Form, not a change in nature. Okay, so you're telling me God is in the form of a cloud. God appeared in a form. Is the nature of the cloud the same as that of God Almighty? Absolutely. Did you say absolutely? The, the, the nature. Cloud is the same as the God Almighty. The taken on the form of the pillar of fire and the pillar of cloud, whoever it is, that went in front of the Israelites as they were moving through the, the wilderness period, which is just basic um, um, Torah teaching. Why can't it be a sign? Why can't the cloud? Why can't the cloud be a sign from God? And we can call it a yes, sign. It's fine. exactly. Why are you saying that is the nature manifesting as a cloud? Okay. I mean that's that's literalist. Okay. Yeah. Let's let's move on. Another point I would like to bring up from the New Testament is this. I mean, do you believe that uh, Jesus Christ worshipped God? Yes, in his in his, in his in his physical flesh. Good. In his physical the form. Physical flesh of Christ who was the servant who was prophesied in, in Isaiah, yeah. the suffering servant, who came down, worshipped the God of Israel as an example right. to the rest of the nation. Go, 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 go. Would, would you say he's the best example in terms of his worship? Yeah, yeah. He, yes? He would you say he, would, he wouldn't worship a false god? No, no. Would you say he would only worship the true god? And he, not only would he not worship a false god, he would not affirm a false god. Absolutely. Okay. And I totally agree with that. As Isa alayhi salam, or Jesus Christ, peace be upon him, yeah. yes, is someone who is a servant of God, like you correctly said, yes. He became a servant. Well, he became a servant, means he's a servant, right? And who was his master when he became a servant? Uh, his father. His, his father, his God, right? Do you believe that is his God? Yeah, yeah, in, in, his, in his flesh, yeah. Okay, when Jesus was human, in his flesh, as you said, Yes? What made that no, no, no. Whom did he worship? The one true God of Israel. And who is that? So, the one true God of Israel. The only true God, actually. The only true God of Israel. Yeah. Who he was glorified with in, in, in eternity. Who is his father from, from all eternity. Yeah. Who is the one for whom he uh, so it's, came in. So, his father is the one he worshipped, right? Yeah. His God and his father. And like one. Peter says, one Peter, his God, his father and his God. So, okay. So, so the Why? physical flesh yeah. that Jesus Christ took on, which right. was real flesh, real flesh. And I know he's a human. Yeah. Yes. Simple as that. Keep it simple, my that friend. No need to complicate. Be, who is Jesus Christ? Yeah. Worship the God of Israel. Right. Whom do you worship, as the, as God? The God of Israel. Right. So only the Father, yes? I worship the God of Israel. Only the Father. <laughs> No, because Jesus Christ is the God of Israel in human flesh. No, no, no. Wait, wait, wait. Let me get this right. So Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah. Backtrack and then rethink. I need, I need to, uh, right. So my question once again is, whom do you worship? I already asked you whom Jesus worship, and you confirm is only the Father, Absolutely. right? Whom do you worship? As so, God Almighty. So as a Christian, I believe that Jesus Christ has pertains to one John. One, one, in the beginning was the Word, the Word yeah. was with God, the Word was God. And then 1 John 14, all things were created through Him. And the Word became flesh. I just asked you, who, whom do you worship? <laughs> Foundation. Okay. I worship the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Right. So you don't worship what Jesus worshipped. You worship something additional to that. I worship the Father and Jesus Christ. Only two? Well, because, because from my conception or understanding... Are you a Benetarian? The Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. It's, it's equal. From my conception of... So you don't believe the Holy Spirit is a third person? No so let's keep it simple then. <laughs> okay, so Why back. is that only two? It's not only two. I'm just curious, that's all. You can't all. see there's a kind of like a crowd that's... Um, uh, kind of, uh, Are you nervous? A little bit. That's fine. Because this guy's a warrior. I'm, I'm, I'm like... I'm you're, you're, you're doing quite well, actually. I would say you're, you're, you're doing quite well. One thing I do like, though, other than the literal so, interpretations. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm saying is, I believe that Jesus Christ. All I'm asking you is that if you believe that yeah. Jesus Christ is the best role model, yeah. the best person that will teach you how 
whom to worship as a true God, why do you then go against the teaching of Jesus Christ? Because Jesus Christ is the word of God himself manifesting you. No, I'm not, I'm not asking you about the nature of Jesus Christ. I'm just asking you, I'm not asking you about the nature of Jesus Christ. That comes later on. First, I'm asking you whether you follow Jesus Christ in his footsteps in terms of whom he worshipped. It seems like you don't because you added two extra entities in addition to the Father. I disagree with that. No, no, you. When I say you, means you yourself claim I, I that you worship the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Am I right? Correct yeah, me if I'm wrong. Yeah. Okay, so you... But the Son is the Word. But regardless, we, we can go with those semantics later on. <laughs> First, the three persons of the Trinity, the, I'll use the term Trinity. Is that okay with you? Yeah, just for the brevity of this discussion. So, the triune God is what you recognize as God. Jesus Christ recognized as a Unitarian God. So, Trinitarian God is what you worship. Unitarian God is what Jesus worships. Why is there a discrepancy in what Jesus worship and what he taught people to worship and what he taught people to pray to? Why is there a clear discrepancy? I think you follow the church, not Jesus Christ. Because the church came up with this Trinity doctrine in the 4th century. So, for me, I, we, we can say Trinity and that's fine. No problem, but yeah. in the earliest documents, Jesus Christ is declared to be God. Yeah. Earliest documents. The New Testament scriptures. Give me one scripture in the New Testament where Jesus claims to be God. Or even the old, doesn't matter. Where Jesus claims to be God, gone. One scripture where Jesus explicitly, unequivocally states that He is God Almighty. How can God worship God? I mean, He already said Jesus worshiped the Father of God. And now you're saying He's God. Make up your mind. So. I had this conversation for two hours with um, Adnan. Yeah. Recently. How long did I take? Alhamdulillah. Yeah. Adnan, mashallah, may Allah, may Allah give him jazakhar. So but he's mashallah like, quite good. Go on old ground, but I think fundamentally, what it comes down to is number one, the purpose of what Jesus came for. His initial mission was not to be um, glorified and honored. It was him to, it was for him to glorify and honor. Jesus Christ declares himself to be God in um, 8, but, sorry, John 8 verse 54? 58. I'm sorry, 58, yeah, you know, before Abraham was, I am. But that's, he's not declaring his God. That's fine, it's an interpretation of God. Exactly. Give me explicit words. Over, over, over the course of the New Testament, honor me the way you, uh, sorry, he, he goes, oh, I'm trying to find a verse. There's, there's a verse where he says, so that every man may honor the Son, just as they honor the Father. Yeah, honoring means respect. Jesus Christ says, believe in God, also believe in me. Yeah. Um, so these are all interpretations. They are not explicit. That's, fine, that's, that's why I said, yeah. even one. Okay, you got how many books in the New Testament? 23? 24? I don't know. 23, yeah? You, you haven't got a single passage which claims that Jesus is Omega, Almighty God. Last, Even Alpha Omega is an interpretation. Then you'll be worshipping Melchizedek, oh, who said he has no beginning of days, no end of time. Would you worship Melchizedek oh. as God? Okay, so we're, we're not going to get too far here. You are not, because Jesus himself, he, he refutes all the Trinitarians. You know, Jesus himself refutes any Trinitarian who claims that God is the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit. Because if that was the case, then Jesus would have Jesus would have uh, taught his disciples, his apostles, and his uh, the people who he was teaching. What does the Bible say in John 1:14? Yes, where he says, uh, sorry, John 14, where he says, uh, if you love me, follow my commandments, follow my teaching. Yes, John 14:24, I believe. Yeah. Now, if Jesus is teaching you clearly that the only true God is the Father, in uh, um, uh, John 17:3, an explicit quote, statement. Quote, quote the yeah, quote it, doesn't matter. Quote 17 in 5. 7 in 5, we'll come to that, no problem. Even if you quote 7 in 5, it still, <laughs> it still doesn't change John 7 in 3. He still explicitly states that the only true God is the Father. So, do you also accept that he, Jesus Christ pre-existed then? Also? Actually, that doesn't mean he pre-existed. I'll tell you, I'll tell you how. If Jesus, <laughs> let me ask you this. Can God lose his glory? This is, this is, this is, this is, this is the issue. You keep saying what God can and can't do. No, no, what, I keep saying based what, on what God what said. What standard do you use to say the scripture? Can, 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 the can scripture. Do. Yeah, exactly. The so, scripture says so, God is immortal. Yes. You say He died on the cross for three days and three I'm nights. Saying the physical flesh of Christ died. Because. Well, the person died, right? Yeah. The person died. Is the person immortal? He's pierced, can you pierce the spirit? Say again? Can you pierce the spirit? Can you pierce? The Bible says God is spirit. Can you pierce the spirit? Oh, can you pierce your spirit? Of course you can't. Can you pierce my spirit? So we both are immortal. 
So <laughs> by your definition. I'm doesn't mean you're mortal. No, but this, this is what I'm saying. So if you, hold on, you know the, hold, wait a minute, hold, hold, hold you need to understand let's, let's one go, thing. Go the spirit, now. or sorry, the soul that we have is something that God created as immortal. But, but, we, but we, we experience the first death. Yeah. The only death we yeah. experience is this, yeah. in this world. Did Jesus experience that death? Yes, for the sake of all of us. I didn't ask you why. Did he experience that death? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Did the Father experience that death? No, no. So who is immortal? And not, and not, only, and not only did the Father not experience the death, the Word of God did not experience the death of the cross. So who died for you on the sin then? From the three? The servant, the man Jesus Christ. Is he part of the uh, Trinity? The physical flesh of Jesus Christ. Is, is the man who died for you part of the Trinity? The physical flesh of Jesus Christ is created. His essence was, was the Word of God. His essence was Okay. So is the physical flesh which is created by no, God, no. is that part of the Trinity? So whoever died for you, for you which is the flesh, is not part of the Trinity anyway. Wait, wait. You see what I mean? No one from the Trinity died for you. The person. You know why the Christians always say the flesh died? In fact, they are telling me, wait, wait. In fact, you are just telling me that death occurred here. Yes? Death took place here. Okay? Death, what does that the mean? The death of the body of Christ, which was a creation. Well, how, do you, how do you define that? The separation of the soul from the spirit. Very good. The soul from the body. Yes. Does that happen for you when you're going to die? Absolutely. Does it happen for me when I die? Did it happen to Jesus Christ when he died? Good. Did it happen for the Father? No. Look, so from all the four examples I gave you, who is the only one who is truly immortal? Who never dies? Jesus Christ. No, Jesus died. <laughs> <laughs> he died on the cross. He said it himself. I asked you, did he die? I'm being cheeky. No, 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 but it's a, it's why you're confused is because no, no, you have not, made up your mind that Jesus is immortal, even though the whole I'm idea of the crucifixion is for him to die. I'm not confused at all. And do you know why? Like okay, let me ask you this. No, if no, someone no, is. No, 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 no. Do you know why I'm not confused? Because. Actually, you are. Because I asked you from the four who's truly immortal, you said Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is immortal. You didn't even say the Father. What I'm saying is this, okay? Because. These, argue, these arguments are good. Yeah, even the Holy Spirit didn't say. I appreciate say. that. But what I'm saying, what I'm, what I'm, I, I, I know I haven't come across as well as I wanted to. No problem. Sorry, which verse? I might help you. If we look at Philippians uh, 2, verse 5. Yeah, 2 6. 2, two 6. Yeah. Who, was in the, who was in the very form of God himself. Yeah. But he emptied himself of his glory. Yeah. And took on the form of the servant. So God, he, he did it. You're saying, you're saying, can God do it? The Bible says he did. Okay. First and foremost, first and foremost, when he says in the form, means the image of God. Yes? Was Adam in the image of God? In Genesis 1 to 27? Not in the same way that Jesus was. How do you know not in the same way? It says exactly the same thing. Not in the same way. God created man in his image. No. Very clearly in Genesis. No, no, no. Genesis 1, 26 or 27. Very form. It doesn't say image. It says form. Form and image are synonymous. God himself. Form and image. The Bible says the whole universe My friend. created through. Jesus Form Christ. and image are similar. They are same. The Bible says that all things were created through Jesus Christ. True. So not by true. The Bible says the word of the by, by the word of the Lord the heavens were made. Okay. By Look, the word. Even if you Jesus. you know, <laughs> even if you bring up all these statements, yeah. yes? Who is the ultimate God of Jesus? His father. The God so, of Jesus is physical flesh because Jesus Christ no, no, whoa, whoa, whoa. is God. No, no. If Jesus is worshipping the physical body of Christ. How many persons is Jesus? One. one. Good. So why are you separating him into flesh and uh, divine? Because we have to. No, that's a... Because the word... When you, do, when you divide, when you separate the natures of... Uncreated, wait, wait. ...became flesh. When you separate and, and the body. flesh and divine nature of Jesus, that is a heresy. Think about this. Right? Because you cannot... You know, you as a person, you have many natures. You might be kind, you might be generous, yes, you might be passionate. These are your natures, but how many persons are you? You're still one person. One, yeah. So when some, when Samson will die, what will people say? Did the nature die or did they, will they say the person died? So, Similarly, in the case of Jesus, it's the person who died. So the Bible says, I know, I, I know Muslims don't believe this. Believe what? The Bible says that God is spirit. Say again? God is spirit. God is spirit. God, God is spirit. No, no, but even if you maintain, you I don't know. I know you don't, I because to me, no, no, I'll tell you why I don't believe it. We believe the spirit is a creation of Allah. And Allah is unlike his creation. 
You see what I mean? That's the that's reason. So we don't, when Allah says, unlike the creation, it means everything, including the spirit. Including the angels, okay. Including the soul, spirit, everything. All these things are creations of Allah. There is a commutation. The Bible says God is spirit. And that spirit is uncreated. He's, he's the uncreated spirit here. And that spirit itself. Sorry, is it okay if you move your I'm getting background. The spirit, the word of God, his essence came and became a human being. Okay, let's go back to whom Jesus worshipped. No, because we are going in circles here. We are going in circles about the flesh and the spirit and the body and all that. To me, it's one person. Did that person die? The second person of the Trinity? Yes or no? The body of Christ. Person, I'm asking the person, not his nature. You always go to the nature. Did the person, did Nobody the person die? To make a delineation. No, but you also as a person, your body dies and your soul lives on. Okay, same like Jesus. So, okay, so it's no different to the him. The person of Christ, the part that could be pierced, because the spirit part of Jesus Just like Christ, you, my friend. Just like you. You are no different. The eternal word, which, which is... Who your soul is also immortal. It won't die. It's not okay, it's not, it doesn't cease to exist. It's not eternal. Okay? It's not I didn't say eternal, I said immortal. Yeah. Listen. The reason I said immortal is because your soul is also created immortal. It will not cease to exist. Yes? So depending on God's judgment, it will be eternal bliss or eternal damnation. We leave that to the judgment of, of God Almighty. However, if you keep saying the flesh died, his soul, his spirit did not die, then you are the same. You are in the same situation. Your, soul, your body dies and your soul lives on. You see what I mean? It doesn't make you immortal, my friend. Yes, your soul is immortal, but as a person, you are mortal. Just like I am mortal. And that's the reason in 1 Timothy 6.16, God doesn't say, yes, that there are many who are immortal. God says there is only He alone is immortal. In 1 Timothy 6.16, He alone. What does the term, if I say, you alone are holding a bottle of water, yes? That means nobody else is holding it. You see what I mean? We have to. Same, and in the same book, it says in, in 3 Timothy, in 3 Timothy this verse 16, it says, God manifests in the flesh. Well, that's a change in nature then. <laughs> that's a change. No and, problem? And now God can do that if He wants to. Well, it goes against it goes against Malachi 3.6. God of Israel can do whatever He wants. No, He can't. Can He? Can now, he the God of Israel. Man, it says it explicitly. Okay, can the God of. Explicitly. Let me ask you this. Can the God of Israel create another God? He can do anything, right? <laughs> what happened? I love, I, love these, I, love, I love these questions because they're so well structured. Bro, these are the contradictions you will come across when you talk to atheists even. No, no, Not only the Muslims, because even the atheists will bring up this point. Because you, if you're going to what? use logic, which you were using earlier... Do you know why God can't create another God? Because it's... But you said He can do anything. Do you know why God cannot create another God? Yeah. Because eternality is an actual attribute of God. And if the being was created, then it cannot be God. Okay, immortality is also the attribute of God. No, but God, we, we, we receive... Omniscience is also the attribute of God. We receive immortality. So for, for a being to be truly God, it would have to be self-existent. And that created God would, would be contingent on the God of Israel or the God of the, God, the, God of the universe. No, no, but immortality is also an attribute of God. But according to you, one of the persons of the Trinity died for you. Yeah, yeah. in his physical flesh. But his, but his, his essential essence... Did the person die? Trinity, That's all I'm asking. Let's the use the term person. Did the person die? Yes or no? Jesus Christ, the person in his, in his, in his physical flesh died. Yes, yes. Okay. And there's no issue. Let me ask you this. And, and that when is, Jesus... And that is not a logical question. Wait a minute. Like when Jesus was... Let me, let me ask you this. When possible. Jesus was eating food, yeah. yes? It You're going to say physical. it was his physical body. And not only but when Jesus, when Jesus actually does miracles, yep. what will you say? No, no, the Holy That's Spirit, not his physical. The Holy Spirit enabled him to do miracles. Oh, he can't do it himself? No, no, Jesus did Christ did not do a single miracle by his own power. He so did. he's contingent on someone else? His physical flesh, we're talking about the your man. Whole, your your principle, man. no, no, wait a minute. Your principle of contingency applies to him here. Jesus Christ says it himself, I, I, have, I have myself given nothing as the Father. Nothing? Yeah. Yeah. Wow. In his physical flesh. This is it. It's not everything we're quoting were, were words spoken by a human being who walked around. He was walking around, he was talking, he was communicating. How do you interpret the transfiguration of Christ, Matthew 17? What's your interpretation? What's your understanding of that? You tell me. I'm asking you. You tell me. Transfiguration, look, all this... Because for me, Jesus is a human being. I'm asking, what's Jesus is a human being for me. That's all it is. What's your interpretation? I don't believe that even. I don't actually believe that. The transfiguration, the death, for me, 
the death of Jesus didn't happen. It doesn't, it doesn't matter if you believe it or not, because we can move, we can move in. What, one thing I want to talk about, I want to talk about the death of Jesus Christ in a second. Actually, we were talking about the worship of Jesus yeah, Christ. Yeah, and and no, you, I'm wait a minute, you, you contradicted Jesus' teaching by saying that you worship a trinity, Jesus worships only a Unitarian God. You see what I mean? Okay, so Why would you actually... This is, this is the issue. Okay, I think you don't love Jesus because if you loved him, based on John 14, 24, if you love Jesus, you would follow his teachings. And his teachings came through the apostles as well, which is authoritative. And we, and we can yeah. What did he teach? And they declared what did he teach? unequivocally what? that the whole universe was created by Jesus Christ. No, no, okay. through. You said earlier, through. There's a big difference by and through. By his power. No, 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 no. It wasn't. You just said he cannot do anything by himself. You're contradicting yourself again. Physical humanity. Oh, so you're saying many. How, how, how could how could the universe have been created by Jesus Christ if he was born in two thousand in the year two thousand? So um, two thousand years ago. No, no. When you say God gave him the ability, I never said that. You said Holy Spirit. Said, Is Holy Spirit not God for you? Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Because we're, we're mixing things now. Yeah, go on. So. God gave the human being, Jesus Christ, the man in his physical flesh, who was the word of God made flesh, the ability to do miracles. Okay. okay. In the Bible, it also says that that's God the Father that's created. One point. That's one point. That the Father, God the Father is a creator, yes? So who is the creator? Second the Father point, or the second, Son? Second point is this. Second point is this. Yeah. In the Bible, it says that by the word of the Lord, God created things through His Word, who is Jesus, yeah. before He became a man. For, when you say through, look, even before He became a man, became yes, even before He became a man, when He says God created through Jesus, yes, so who is the actual creator? So all things that came He's into God. existence, all things that came into existence yes. were created through the Word of God. By whom? His Word. Yeah, through Him, by? His Word. Wait a minute. Through, G, through the Word, by? By the Spirit. Which spirit? God Almighty, right? Yeah, there you go. Exactly. So the ultimate creator is God Almighty, not yeah, Jesus. Jesus Christ. Yes. Now let me ask you this. You know, in the Jesus Christ wait, wait. Is God manifest in flesh. If you're going to believe that, then let me ask you this. Why does after the ascension of Jesus, yes. does it say the head of Christ is God? Because Christ, the physical. No, no, no. This is after his ascension. Because Christ, the anointed one, the Messiah, was 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 um, exalted to the right hand of God the Father. But when he says the head of Christ is God, yeah, which God, which God is that? Because Christ is the anointed one, the 